What's up, peeps? Welcome back. As always, I'm your host, Lee Benz, and thank you so much for joining us for the YouTube edition of the AEW Insider. This is this week's Movies and More edition. I do have some movie news, some entertainment news, some reviews of some shows that I watched this past week. I also have trailer reviews of new movie trailers that dropped this week. We have what's opening this week at the movies, and plus this weekend box office, plus a lot more. So let's get to the show. First, we'll start off with our reviews. The first show I watched this week was episode two of Disney Plus's original series, The Mandalorian. It was excellent. I love The Mandalorian so far. I love the Star Wars universe. I love any kind of story that's actually decent, that gives us more of that universe or brings it back to it, shows us stuff we haven't seen, what have you. This show so far is fucking awesome. What this episode was about was after a brief Although satisfying yet intense ambush by two rival bounty hunters, the Mandalorian treks back to his ship with his baby Yoda. Unfortunately, a band of Jawas has stripped the aircraft clean, so the Mandalorian must put the plot on hold to chase after the scavengers and reclaim his ship's parts. So it's exactly what he says. He comes back from that mission that he went back. He was hired to do a mission. He got there. He had to kill, you know what I mean, his target. And it was actually a little baby Yoda. Looks just like Yoda, but it's a baby. It's absolutely adorable. He had a change of heart. He took the baby with him instead of killing him. Gets back to a ship and those Jawas, the little motherfuckers with the red eyes and the little cloaks. They look like they're from the movie Phantasm. They actually took everything off his ship. So him with that uh, alien guy that he was on the planet with go to where they are and they make a deal. They actually want him to go steal an egg from this cave. And if he could do that, then they'll give him all the ship's parts back. So, I mean, it's a fucking awesome episode. You got to check out episode two of Disney's The Mandalorian. And I do give it eight out of 10 stars. Finally, I did watch the season finale of American Horror Story 1984. It was kick-ass. There's tons of mix of reviews online. People are saying it was the worst season, worst episode in history. I don't agree. I think it was absolutely kick-ass, and they wrapped it up good. So a lot of seasons of American Horror Story, they never tie up all the loose ends. They did it in this one. It was good. What it was about is that the episode was broken up pretty evenly between flashback sequences or just what happened to trap everyone at Camp Redwood and the ghost attempt to start stop Margaret from hatching her evil plan and it had Bobby being chased around by either Richard Ramirez or Margaret Booth. Bobby is actually the son of Mr. Jingles. This episode took place in our time, like the year 2019 or some shit like that. So Mr. Jingles' son is all growing up. He gave his life to save his son as a child, and his son, of course, wants to know what the fuck happened to his dad. So he goes back to the fucking campsite where he runs into the ghost. He hears the story. He's trying to get killed. It's fun. He's not trying to get killed, but people are trying to kill him. It's fucking awesome. I love how they wrapped it up with a little bow on it. It had a good ending. Definitely check out American Horror Story 1984. I love the entire season. Literally. 80s vibes, music, clothes, and kicked ass. I give it a 9 out of 10. And I do give the whole season, 1984, a 9 out of 10 overall. Opening this weekend in the movie theaters, in case you guys want to catch something, it's going to be number one. This is going to be the juggernaut. It's actually Frozen Part 2, starring Kristen Bell. It's about Elsa the Snow Queen and her sister Anna. They embark on an adventure far away from the kingdom. They are joined by their friends Kristoff, Olaf, and Sven. So this movie, kids absolutely love part one. And it's crazy. I'm a huge Disney fan. I love my toys, as you can see. I love my cartoons, what have you. And I've never even seen Frozen 1, literally. But I know how big Frozen 1 is, and this movie is going to make a ton of fucking money. So Frozen 2 this weekend. Also premiering is A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood starring Tom Hanks. Now, this is the Mr. Rogers story. And in real life, in the 70s or some shit like that, there was a journalist, and he actually profiled Fred Rogers, the guy who played Mr. Rogers, and they actually became friends. So this movie shows who really was Mr. Rogers, how he was behind the scenes, what an impact he had on the nation, and what a good person he was overall. So if you're a big Mr. Rogers fan from a kid like I am, definitely check out A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Next, we have Dark Waters, starring Avengers Mark Ruffalo. 
It's about a tenacious attorney who uncovers a dark secret that connects a growing number of unexplained debts to one of the world's largest corporations. While trying to expose the truth, he soon finds himself risking his future, his family, and his own life. I did cover this a couple of weeks ago when I did see the trailer again also. I was doing a trailer review on it. It looks excellent. I forget the whole the thing, what the company is, but I know that they're like poison in the water and the people are literally fucking dying. And they've been poisoned in the water for like since the 70s or over 70 years. It looks excellent. Check it out. And finally opening this week, 21 Bridges, starring Black Panther's Chadwick Boseman. After uncovering a massive conspiracy, an embattled NYPD detective joins a citywide manhunt for two young cop killers. As the night unfolds, he soon becomes unsure of who to pursue and who's in pursuit of him. When the search does intensify, authorities decide to take extreme measures by closing all 21 of Manhattan's bridges to prevent the suspects from escaping. Now, normally I just feel like, hey, it's just another cop movie, blah, blah, blah. But that whole thing with the bridges and shit like that, that's pretty dope. I still think it's just going to be eh overall, but it definitely sounds like it's worth a look. These are some movie trailers that were released this week or I finally seen this week. So I'm just going to cover them and let you know what I thought. The first one is Scoob, as in Scooby-Doo. To me, it doesn't look that great and the voices sound like crap. They stay hiring big-name stars to get people in the door, yet they sound nothing like the real voice actors. If they would just hire real voice actors, then it would do a lot better. Because if you hear Shaggy in this and Friend and fucking Velma in that, they don't even sound like them, which takes me totally out of the movie. But it looks alright. It shows how Shaggy and Scooby met plus the rest of the gang, and how do you know they became teens and they grew up together. It's their first mystery they have to solve together. So that's pretty cool, but I just think the voice acting is horrible. So school will be out next summer of 2020. Also, they released a trailer for The Way Back, starring Ben Affleck. Now, this looks great, and it's like finally Ben Affleck got back to a good movie, literally, after the whole Batman shit, what have you. It's about a man with a lot of demons. You can tell he is a serious alcoholic through the coming attraction, and he's pretty much lost it all. He gets called back to his hometown to coach a high school basketball team for the, first, for the same team that he used to play for. It looks fucking excellent. It shows him, he's drinking, he's got these kids that depend on him, people think they're shit, it has to do like his ex-wife maybe, his kids. It looks great. To check out the trailer for The Way Back. Also, we have the trailer for Seabird, starring Twilight's Kristen Stewart. She took a break and she's back on a roll now, hard with Charlie's Angels, this and a couple more coming out. And it also stars Avengers' Anthony Mackie. It's an Amazon exclusive. In the late 1960s, American actress Jean Seberg grew bored of acting and became enthralled with the activist politics of the era, particularly the Black Panthers. I mean, this I, I really don't like her as an actress, I just have to say. It's probably the whole Twilight thing. It's not that she's a bad actress, just that, like mm, later in her career after being a kid, I don't think she's that great. This movie, I think, is going to suck me in and bring me back on her side. She looks like she put herself in the character. She goes all out in it. It's a rich chick who literally gets involved with the black fucking Panthers. She really wants to help deep down, but then people are against her to take her out. Like fucking publicity firm, the government, what have you. It looks really good. Check out the trailer for Seabird. And then this awesome trailer I seen. It was called Almost Home. This was a surprise to me, but it looks excellent. It's about a group of homeless teenagers in Los Angeles who are struggling to find themselves. It has like this girl. She's about to get stabbed by these boys in the sky, and this one chick saves her. So she feels she owes her a debt of gratitude and follows her around. Come to find out the girl who saved her is fucking butt-ass homeless in L.A., living in a shack of cardboard, got shady friends. She's addicted to drugs, what have you. This girl, I don't know if she's got a too great at home or what have you, and nobody gives a fuck about her, but she decides to go live with these homeless people and of course she's thrown into that world and that world is no fucking joke the chick who say there's like a heroin head it looks fucking crazy so definitely check out this sleeper it's called almost home show it some support and finally we do have the trailer for knives and skin 
I can't even pretty much explain this trailer. It's got a bunch of fucking interwinding stories going on at one time. They are calling it a mix between Twin Peaks and Darnie Darko. They say it's a cult classic in the making. It does look fucking great, but I really can't explain it. So check out the trailer for Knives and Skip. On to some streaming news. Disney Plus is a week old, and it is great. I myself have only watched the Mandalorian episodes, but from my daughter's and my mother's reactions, plus what I did see when I was just scrolling through the content, for only $7.99 a month, you're insane if you don't get it. You're able to have seven accounts with four of them streaming at once, so I have my daughter, my mom, my uncle, and myself for $7.99 a month. It's insane for the content that you get. Remember, the first week is free, so you got to check it out, peeps. I'm not, not getting paid for them or anything. I'm just letting you know. On to some entertainment news. Lou Ferrigno, a.k.a. the original Incredible Hulk. He used to play him on TV like in the eight seventies. I mean, late 70s, early 80s, some shit like that. I think the 70s. He weighed in on what he thought of Mark Ruffalo's portrayal of the Hulk in the new Avengers movies. Ferrigno felt that Ruffalo's performance was disappointing. Kanye West did appear in church with mega money pastor Joel Osteen. While at the Osteen service, Kanye claimed that he was the greatest artist that God has ever created. And of course, the internet is going crazy over that comment. But also during that, he gave warning to parents and children about what they watch and what we let them watch, how the government and others put signs and subliminal messages in our programming which, if you ask me, is 120% true, but it just sucks that people hate him so much and or think he's so fucking insane that they just ignore the good stuff that he says, such as that. Rapper Akon has announced that he wants to run against Kanye West for president in the 2024 election. I'll just leave that one right there for you folks. Mike the Situation Sarantino's wife has suffered a miscarriage. So our condolences here at the AEW Cider goes out to the Situations family. We love the show. We love him. My daughter fucking loves them. They're awesome. He just did all that time. He got out. Well, not all that time, but hey, time is time. He did that time. He got out. Tried having a kid. It didn't work out this time. Keep on trying the situation. We need a little one running around. Paris Hilton was asked about her old show, The Simple Life, which my daughter and I still love to this very day. They asked about a reunion show of it, and this is what Miss Hilton had to say. It's a different time right now. Nicole, Richie, and I back then, yes, of course it was fun doing that and me playing that character. We had the best time with it. Best friends on a road trip all around the world and doing jobs we were never doing our lives, and we had the best time doing it. But now I'm like a serious businesswoman, she explained. Then she said, I think if I was doing that, I couldn't play the dumb character anymore. Maybe like the Simple Life Boss Babies. So that'd be awesome. I hope they do reboot it. That show is my shit. And on to some music news. Speaking of Kanye West, he has announced that he is doing a sequel to his last gospel album that he released a couple weeks ago. He did enlist the help of gangster rapper turned mega producer turned mega mogul Dr. Dre himself. So expect it. Dr. Dre and Kanye West are making a fucking rap album. I don't care what you got to say about Kanye. He's already dope on his own. So is Dre. Those motherfuckers are going to blow shit up. Video game news. Well, I've been advertising at Google Stadia, and it has dropped, and people love it. It does have its issues, its kinks, its bugs, which will be worked out over time. I mean, it's Google, come on. But on day one, at first, they had 11 titles to choose from. You've been seeing a couple articles last week saying that wasn't enough, blah, blah, blah. So for the starting day, they did jump it up to 22 games. So right now, you can play 22 fucking games on your TV with no system, boom, ready to go. And you do get a free at first. But if you weren't paying, it's only $10 a month. And then they're going to be adding brand new and old titles all the time. The Stadia is the future, people. You gotta get one. It is the console killer. And also in some video game news, the Capcom Cup will be taking place December 13th in California. What that is is a big tournament of all Capcom's fighting games like Street Fighter V, what have you. And they actually got my dog, Kenny Omega, from AEW to be the host of it this year. Omega is a huge Street Fighter fan and video game fan, so that'll be awesome.
And my recommendation of the week this week is, it's a great movie. It's from 1992, and it's called School Ties. It stars Ben Affleck, Brandon Frazier, Matt Damon, and Chris O'Donnell. It's about this kid who moves to a new area, and he gets enlisted in a new private school. Everything is going great. He meets new friends, he's on a sports team, he finds a pretty girl. It's all going amazing until his new best friends find out that he is Jewish. Then it all goes bad from there. It's an amazing film, it's an amazing cast in their prime, and it's one of my personal faves. So definitely check out School Ties, it is a must. All right, we're going to wrap up this show with this weekend's box office. Number one, Ford versus Ferrari. It pulled in $31 million. Number two, Midway, $8.8 million. Number three, Charlie's Angels, $8.7 million. Number four, Playing With Fire, $8.6 million. And rounding out the top five is Last Christmas with $6.8 million. All right, peeps, that's it for this week's episode of Movies and More, YouTube edition. You know, I love movies, I love TV, video games, music, what have you. So any kind of news that I find cool, I like to pass out to you guys. Definitely check out those trailers. Give me a little bit, and I'm going to put them on our Twitter and my Facebook, so you can just click on them and see them. There's a lot of good movies coming out. Definitely go show some support in the movies this weekend and go see a movie if you can. You got a kid, take him to see Frozen too. you know what I mean? But anyway, I will be back. I've been doing a lot of videos. If you go up on our YouTube page right now, I got part one of our top holiday movies to watch around Christmas. We're going to be doing the top five horror movies to watch around Christmas. We got a lot coming down the pike. Uh, I will be back this week with a wrestling podcast and a movie podcast, and I will be back this weekend with some more YouTube videos. So definitely show us some love on all podcasting platforms, Facebook and YouTube with the AEW Insider, and on Twitter, it's the AEW Insider 1 as a number one. All right, peace. As always, I'm your host, Lee Benson. Thank you so much for joining us on this week's Movies and More edition of the AEW Insider. Ciao, peeps. <laughs>